Who is this ghastly man? Your one and only favorite Muppet. <laughs> Hey there! What's going on, everybody? It's good to see you. Uh, John Richardson, live at the Apollo. I'm going to react to that. It is about a 12-minute set, and I'm doing this because when I was watching uh, The Real Man's Road Trip, um, I realized that I had never actually seen John Richardson do uh, stand-up before. Uh, at least I don't think. If I'm wrong, please correct me. But I don't think I've ever seen John Richardson do stand-up comedy. And, um, of course, in The Real Man's Road Trip, they were, he was talking about his onion joke. Which, I don't think that's going to be in here. But mainly I've seen John Richardson on uh, clips, compilations of 8 out of 10 cats. So, this will be a first time. And I feel like I owe it to him because I like John. He seems like a really nice dude, bloke whatever you want to call him. But, uh, oh, by the way, if for those of you who are wondering where part two is, the reaction to part two of The Real Man's Road Trip, it got blocked. So, fortunately, I don't think it's going to be up on this uh, YouTube channel. So, uh, apologies for that. But what can you do, you know? But uh, it'll be interesting to see John Rich and see how funny he is. So let's get right into it. Remember to like, subscribe, do whatever you guys want. And let's check him out. I hope he does well. Coming out of the smoke. Greetings, Apollo. Are you well? <laughs> but, uh, thank you for coming. I hope you enjoy yourselves. So who's who's around? We have uh, musicians here. We have uh, Lee Ryan is here from Blue. How are you? And uh, uh, Tinchy Strider is here as well, isn't he? There he is. The sunglasses on indoors, you cool sod. <laughs> Trendy. Took your hat off. I appreciate that. I'm into, uh, I'm into a sort of type of music. I don't know if you guys know. It's sort of suburban music. Uh, Suburban music, uh, we call it. <laughs> Pretty cool shit. I've got a new single coming out called It's Like That, but we can have it changed if you're not satisfied. <laughs> Rachel's here. Hello. How are you? Rachel does the numbers on uh, Cats Does Countdown because we can't let Jimmy do them, can we? <laughs> <laughs> all come out the same, wouldn't they? Anyway, thank you all for coming. I hope. I feel like a lot of you guys from the UK have a major crush on Rachel. And I don't blame you. She's very pretty. You have a wonderful evening, but not too good. Because uh, Britain's the only country you sort of have to quantify that. Because most countries, when you say have a good time, people mean enjoy the thing we're doing. But in Britain, that means drink until you're sick in the morning. <laughs> it's a really unique approach to fun we have. Where... If you don't remember it while you're puking into a toilet, then it, you might as well have not done it, to be honest. <laughs> I like this time of year. This is the time of year I like, right? Because the drinking sort of tempers now, doesn't it? Because we're getting to winter now. It's getting dark. People don't go out in winter, do they? Stay in and they eat stew and they cry. I like that. <laughs> summer, I really struggle because what happens in summer is people go out, don't they? And they do stuff and they have opinions on it. Uh, <laughs> tends to piss me off a little bit, that kind of thing. <laughs> I live in London now. What happens in London? Everyone goes to the river. As you'll know, we all accumulate on the river when the weather is sunny. And there was a day last summer, everyone emailed each other Monday morning and went, Here, mate, you seen the Bertie Beva? <laughs> Don't know the rhyming slang for weather. I haven't checked. <laughs> it's close enough, in it? Bertie Beva, play for West Ham, 30 goals. Legend! Uh, <laughs> and went, yeah, yeah, I've seen it, mate. Sunshine, innit? Fanshine, do it up the bum shine. Do it up the bum shine. <laughs> You, you come down the river Friday night, mate, five o'clock. Yeah, yeah, I'll see you there, four o'clock, mate. Work through lunch, four o'clock. Yeah, nice one, see you there. Apples and bananas, two for a pound, will it? <laughs> uh, successfully emailed. This email went right across London as well. I don't know how they did it. You must be able to put into the address bar of an email, everyone at desks. <laughs> Swept London, so they all congregated Friday night at the river, but the last line of this email was, P.S., don't tell John. Uh, went to my gig, didn't I? Nobody turned up. They'd all gone to the river, but that doesn't stop me. I quite happily shout into an empty room about myself for two hours, <laughs> spitting bile onto empty chairs. 
come out to uh, Waterloo about 11 o'clock to get home and just have never seen carnage like it. I've seen drunk people. I've never seen a whole city shit-faced before. <laughs> and you know everyone's drunk because there are no two people together. No one can coordinate to walk alongside one other person. <laughs> Veering off individuals, grown men just smashing into train station walls because they've seen Harry Potter and they know that one of them... Doosh, one will open up to that magical world where there's that girl where she's not old enough in the films, but she is now, so it doesn't count. <laughs> I've actually seen... I was at a... Uh, what it, it, it's called the Metro Station, which... Uh, back when I was living in Maryland, there's a Metro Station that... Uh, underground... It's mostly underground, but it, there's parts overground. But trains that go all around the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. And I was, yeah, we call it the Metro. And I was in the Metro station. And I saw some Muppet uh, slam into one of the walls. And then he yelled out something like, It's, it's not open! We got to go to the next one. Of course, he was being a jackass and, you know, kind of reenacting or imitating Harry Potter. But uh, everybody, did, most of the people at the station were like dumbfounded. They're like, what the fuck was that? And I felt like I was one of the only ones laughing at it. It was stupid, but it was it just, I love stupid shit. So I, I thought it was funny and I was laughing. But I have seen someone do that, like, intentionally to th throw everybody off their game that day. I, I, I appreciate that kind of stuff when you do something like that around a lot of people. It doesn't harm anybody, but it makes them more aware of where they are, I guess. Because they're like, what the fuck just happened? You know, anyway. People's limbs have stopped working. They're just dragging themselves across the floor, hoovering up chips. <laughs> the biggest problem I had is because no one's left the city all day. No one's left London. So this train now that's about to leave is heaving, right, in a way that I've only ever seen in documentaries set in the third world, you know? <laughs> I realised there was one train left. I thought, if I don't get on that, that's it, right? And when they announce the platform, I've got to be the first one there, right? And I've got a good chance because when they do announce it, I'm the only one here who can still read. <laughs> They announce the platform. Not only do I get to the train, I'm the first one there for the whole train, which means I get my choice of every seat on a train, which would freak a lot of people out. They don't know which one they want. I know exactly what seat I want. I want two together, but I don't want someone to come and sit next to me. I don't want to put my bag on the seat. I'm too much of a coward. Because you know when you put your bag on the seat, eventually someone's going to come up and go, uh, excuse me, could you move that, please? Yes, yes. <laughs> Thought you were going to have this one, didn't you? And I'm here now, the alpha. So you can just... <laughs> my... And I'm just going to touch you with that leg as well. I know. <laughs> That does make you uncomfortable when you're sitting in a public place and somebody you don't know is touching you. At least it does for me, I don't know. Maybe some people like that kind of thing. That's my armrest. You get off, I'm having that one. <laughs> you have that shitty little half one there under the window. That's yours. <laughs> so I just pick the two worst seats on the train. So you think that'll do me. The two seats that nobody else will want, right? So what you do, you walk along the train until you say, well, they've joined two together, but there's no divide. So all these people are stuck in this bit, right? Go in this door here. Don't go on forward with your momentum. Just pivot round like that. And there's a little pouch of seats here that nobody notices, right? Look for the table here. Don't sit at the table. Everybody wants the table. <laughs> sit just behind the table. People see the table's free. They move on. There's two seats here facing backwards. Most people don't like to face backwards. It makes them feel sick. <laughs> Sit by the window, so people walking here assume there's someone there as well. Yeah, go on, keep walking, mate. This is <laughs> got on my seat. I thought I've nailed this. Curled myself up into a little ball of self righteousness, right? Stone cold sober, hating it. People get on the train, drunk, enjoying themselves, winding me up, right? <laughs> Just before we pull out of the uh, station, someone hits the back of my chair, right? Definitely a human head. You can tell by the weight of it and the sound. It's just a girl who's just boosh, passed out, can't move anymore, right? And I think, how did she even get on the train? I can't look round, can I, to find out, because I make eye contact with someone and I think I want to talk to them. Oh, you've got a face, have you? I've got a face, mate. I was born in Bermondsey, actually. Oh, 
to just sit there curled up. And luckily I find out what's happened, right, because a man announces the history of the evening to us all, right? A big South African businessman he is. He's carried her onto the train, right? Now, uh, he's not getting this train, so he needs someone to help her off the train, which for me, all, all he needs to do is tap these two people here, doesn't he? Uh, could you help this woman off the train, please? I don't know if you can see that, but she's absolutely annihilated. <laughs> I'm not actually going to help. I'm leaving now. She's yours. Okay, take care. Cheerio now. Bye-bye. <laughs> He doesn't do that because he realises if he announces to the whole carriage what he's done, we'll all think, well, he's carried a lady onto the train. What a fine gentleman. I shall applaud him and carry him wherever he's going. <laughs> so instead he shouts to all of us, Somebody's got to help this woman off the train, please! <laughs> I've carried her as far as I can, but I can do no more. What a world, what a world. <laughs> Born in South Africa, he's travelled. <laughs> very accurate, that was. Anyway, I hated him. He's the first individual I take time out to hate, and I'm good at hate, it's my skill, right? But then these two people here, I hate them, because they bailed him out. They went, oh, that's okay, we'll get her off the train. And I hated them, just for getting involved. <laughs> and also, because they're drunk as well. All that's happened is they're drunk, but she's more drunk, so they're sobered up now. Oh, is she drunk, is she? Oh, don't worry, we only had the 12 Jaeger bombs, you see, so... <laughs> we'll take care of this. Do be careful there, I pissed there just a little bit, okay? <laughs> Here's how good I am at hate as well. At the same time as I'm hating them for getting involved, I'm simultaneously hating everyone else for not getting involved. <laughs> He's, you know, it seemed like he started out very nervous, which I kind of, seeing the limited knowledge I know of John, I kind of expected that. But what I didn't expect was how fast he can talk. He talks very fast once he gets going, and now you can see he's very confident in what he's doing. Um, it's actually impressive. That's really top-level hatred, that is. Just, there's a woman in distress here, and you did nothing. This country's gone to the dogs. <laughs> He gets off the train and starts to calm myself down. We're rattling along. We get about five minutes into the journey, and I'm almost back at base level hatred, which is still quite high. <laughs> and I hear the noise from behind me of a sort of semi thick liquid hitting the floor from about three or four feet. <laughs> and I think she's never having a can of soup. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bold snack for a train, that, isn't it? <laughs> Heinz Big Soup, I would say, from the sound of that. Oh! It's not that, is it? She just chundered. She just chundered. Yeah. Right? She wakes up chundering on a train she doesn't remember getting on, which is obviously upsetting, so she starts crying, right? And the crying causes her stomach to convulse, which makes her sick again. Uh, so it's a perfect little sandwich of misery going on behind me there. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! What that does, of course, is rocket her up the league to my most hated person on the train. Relegation zone to Champions League overnight. Unbelievable form, right? And the reason I hate her is because all I wanted was this seat, and now I've got to move because sick is coming under the thing. <laughs> I got my bag and my shoes, and I start looking around at people. I think this is ridiculous now. Modern Britain, you can't even get on a train without getting someone else's insides on you. <laughs> I just want someone to look at me and go, oh no, mate, what a country, right? Nobody does. They're all looking at me, angry, because they're as drunk as she is, and they think I'm elevating myself out of this situation. I can see them looking at me going, oh, look at Mr. Clean Shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lardy Dars, too good to have our sick all over him, is he? <laughs> you know who he sounds like right now? He sounds like uh, the guy from Bottom, Hitler, Hitler from Bottom. Um, he's, his voice sounds just like that guy. He was sick on me, mate. I was it a move. I just pissed on him a little bit. <laughs> I realise it's all of us. Everyone in the country is this pissed at the moment. And that's really, bad enough for me. I live here. I knew the signs. If I hadn't had a gig, I'd be as drunk as everyone else. But somewhere on this train is a nice little Spanish family. Nice little Spanish family. They've come to Europe on their summer holidays, haven't they? Because they've seen the Olympics. Yeah, let's go to London. Because we told them, didn't we? Oh, come to London. We all wear matching tracksuits and we help each other. Do come, do come. <laughs> now they're seeing the truth. This is London now. They're on this train terrified. And they booked the tickets ages ago, didn't they? Terrified. Gave them to the kids at Christmas. Here you go, Javier. Here is your Christmas present. Oh, my God. Perfectly serviceable Spanish accent. I ain't changing it. Just <laughs> Just because you are frightened by performance. <laughs> You've put me out of character now. Hang on, I need to get back in. Eh, nachos. Right, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man.
man. Nachos. Nachos. <laughs> oh, fuck off, John. All right, John got me. He, he got me to belly laugh. Don't let me lose the rhythm. Don't let me lose the rhythm. Here you go, Javier. Here is your Christmas present. Oh, what is he? What is he? Oh, my God. <laughs> Tell you when I stop laughing at your voice. <laughs> this summer we're going on our holidays to London Town. London Town. <laughs> That's right, London Town. But when we get there, please don't speak out loud because people will laugh in your face. <laughs> London Town. London 2012 Olympic London. London 2012 Olympic London. But we're going there in 2013 because it's cheaper. Us an apartment is on the edge of the city, so every day we wake up, we have some breakfast, we get the train into town, we go to Buckingham Palace, we watch a show, you can stay up late every night, and we get the last train back to the apartment in the city of London. Fuck it, like, don't sweat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I love his accent so much. I, I, I love it. They're on this train now, seeing for the first time what London is really like. And they're going to go back, aren't they? And their friends are going to say, Hey, how was your holiday in London? They're going to say, Let me tell you <laughs> something about London. Did you get the train in London? Jesus Christ. <laughs> you get the train in London, everybody, she's puking and shitting and crying. Eh, hey, puke you. Don't worry, you puke me, man. I piss you. <laughs> You have to swim out of the train. <laughs> and my friends are gonna say, Jesus, why was everyone so drunk? Was he the festival or something? They're gonna go, no, it was the sunshine come out. The sunshine. Activate drinking with the sunshine. There we go. Consider yourself satirized. <laughs> uh I liked it. I liked it. It wasn't the greatest stand up. I mean, um, but who am I to judge on? I'm, I'm no comedian. I just like to laugh at shit. But um, towards the end, I like his story at the end there. That middle story about the puking and the train thing. Uh, I thought that dragged on a little too long. But uh, yeah, John Richardson, he made me laugh. He made me belly laugh too. So that's always a good sign. I'm sure there's other John Richardson uh, stand-up material that he's done that's on uh, YouTube that I could check out where he has some really funny stories to tell. Probably not about The Onion, but uh, I, I don't know. But uh, I'm glad I finally got around to watching John Richardson. It was a pleasure! and uh, I did, But yeah, the thing that surprised me is I didn't know he could talk so fast. I always thought he was like very reserved and shy and just a sweetheart of a guy. Um, I feel like when he was talking about how he could really hate people, I think he meant it. I feel like John could really hate people, <laughs> especially from what I saw in that uh, when he was with Sean Locke in the uh, Real Man's Road Trip in Louisiana. That was... He looked like he hated some of that, but, um, yeah. Anyway, what do you guys think of John Richardson's stand-up? I thought it was all right. Um, I like the story at the end a bit better, but, uh, he made me belly, belly laugh. So that's always a good sign. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the reaction. Like, subscribe, do whatever you guys want, and I'll see y'all next time. All right. Peace out, Boomerites. See you again.